Hey everybody, so Civ 3 was the first game in the series to feature such a wide variety of victory conditions. And like everything else in the game, some of these conditions are staple tools in your toolkit, some of them are pretty niche, and some of them are completely useless. So I'm going to rank them. I'll give high marks for speed, consistency, potential to win hard games, ease of execution, and fun, just a little bit. So yeah, let's start with number 7, the worst on our list. Number 7 is going to be the 100k Kultrick victory. Now, some of you might remember my channel's attempt at this victory condition and how it gave me a brain aneurysm. I control about one quarter of the world's landmass. Uh, way ahead of my enemies, I planted almost as dense as the game would let me. I planted on 60, or I played on 60% water so I could fit more cities in. I switched into communism. I slaved every single cultural building in every single one of my cities. I even got the pyramids, and it still wasn't even close to enough. There's actually a hidden requirement in the 100k culture victory, which is the, the empire-wide culture victory, that you must have double any other Civ's culture, or else the condition won't trigger. So this makes it completely impractical. To win this kind of victory, you pretty much have to be in a completely dominant position, having crippled all the other Civs on the map, and having a massive amount of land area, likely upwards of um, 40%. If that's the case, why not just win a domination victory? You're, always, you're already most of the way there. I had the perfect setup here, great execution, and I still failed. Not only did I fail, I threw an easily winnable game. Look at this here. I'm way ahead of the Mongols, but they just went and conquered the world. That's what the AI does when you do nothing for 1,000 years while paying 500 gold per turn in maintenance for buildings that you don't need. This was just not a practical strategy. It's slow, it's unfun, it requires a strong position, but it isn't even consistent from that position. Negative 4 out of 10, awful victory condition. Let's go to number 6. Number 6 is Conquest Victory. This means you kill all the other civs. The practical issue with this victory condition is that the other civs will take up most of the world's land area before you could reasonably kill them all in almost all circumstances. There's nothing wrong with this, but usually a domination victory is simply faster. On low or mid difficulties, though, if you act quickly, this can be a faster way of closing out the game from a strong military position. So I'll give it a 3 out of 10. Number 5 is actually the Historogram Victory, or Histogram. Uh, a viewer sent this save file to me. He did nothing for 550 turns, or 540 turns, and he won by score. He was concerned that this didn't count as a victory, but you know what? I'm a generous guy. I'll allow it. Congrats, you won a game of Civ 3. The game just shrugged and gave you the win because you were doing relatively well. Nobody else was doing any better. This condition allows you to get a win while playing only marginally better than, the other, than all the other AI. And I'd say that's actually an advantage. It's like a thing that the victory condition has going for it, actually. Or at least it would be if it wasn't for one other factor. And that's that this simply doesn't fly at higher difficulty levels. The turn t limit is way too big. The AI texts through the tree way faster. And if you don't do something to stop them, the AI will win by space race or one city culture victory way before the turn limit expires. So it's not practical. So you can count these as wins, but use it as a backup. You should practice the other victory conditions on this list because you're going to need them. This one's a three out of 10. Number four is the space race victory. Now this one might turn a few heads, but if you followed my channel for a while, you should know why. And that's because generally in my expert opinion, it's better to close out the game before it gets past the start of the modern era. And that's because at this phase of the game, Things start to get really weird. Let me tell you how. You can get bombed. You can get stealth bombed. You can get nuked. Marines can take your coastal cities. All of the AI cities have a billion defense bonuses because of the metropolis bonuses, because of the radar tower bonus, and because of civil defense. The AI starts actually building interceptors. Espionage becomes an actual annoyance and not just a meme. The AI's bizarre obsession with building a million naval units actually starts to be a pain in your ass. Your key resources can disappear, and as a reminder, you need strategic resources to build spaceship parts. One AI will probably start conquering everyone. The AI can win a diplomatic victory. The AI can win a space race victory. The AI can win a one city culture victory. So what I just gave you was a big list of problems that you do not have to deal with if you close out the game early. And I'm having trouble thinking of a situation where that's not possible, but a space race victory is. To do it, like, to do a space race victory, you need a tech lead. If you have a tech lead, you can build the UN. If you have the UN, you can build win a diplomatic victory, unless you really mismanage diplomacy, or if you messed up building the wonder somehow. But you know what? That could happen. So it's 
It's like a borderline not nice option to have. Just keep an eye out on the AI and shut them down if they get close to winning while you're building spaceship parts. This one gets 4 out of 10. Number three is the One City Culture victory. Now we're really getting to the good stuff. The downside here is that you have to decide you're doing it early. It's not a huge commitment, and, and some games I just like having the option on the table, even if I end up doing something else. But you can't decide to do it halfway through the game, or even a quarter of the way through the game. You plant your first city, and if your capital is quite good, or if you have a great city spot nearby, like this one right here with a million cows, then you just start stacking wonders there. And you buy all the cultural improvements you can once you're out of despotism. This will open the door for the one city culture victory, victory condition. Wonder stacking is completely viable in Civ 3, especially if you grab Copernicus's Observatory or Newton's University, which multiply tourism gold. Look at all the gold we're getting from tourism here. All of that gets multiplied because of this wonder or these two wonders, and that's why our science is so insane in this one city. Um, I'd say I'd recommend for three to five wonders in the ancient era, and then an another three to five wonders in the medieval era. I'm surprised that new players don't take advantage of this victory type. I know you guys like to try to build every single wonder in the game, and this actually makes that a viable victory condition. It still works on the highest difficulties too, just mostly on island maps, because wonder stacking stunts your expansion phase otherwise. So I, I give this one a, a 7 out of 10. Okay, number 2 is domination victory. This one is kind of a caveman wind condition. You need 66% of the world's area. Yeah, you can see that on the screen here. Uh, but the game should pretty much be over by the time you get to 50%. The rest is a slog, which loses us a few points on speed. But if the other victory conditions seem too arcane or technical for you, this is a great one to go with. You don't have to worry about being beaten to the UN or screwing up the expansion phase or that giant list of random garbage that happens in the modern era. It's very consistent. It's also a very honest win condition. You can't cheese this one. If you get it, it's because you deserve the win. So I'll give this one a 9 out of 10. All right, we're here at number one. If you've been to this channel before, you've probably guessed what it is. It's the diplomatic victory. So how does it work? Well, the person who builds the UN can decide to trigger elections. They run against one or two other candidates based on who has high land area and population. If the AI's opinion of you is polite or gracious, they will vote for you, as long as they don't like another candidate better. So the catch here is that AI opinion in Civ 3 is really easy to manipulate, and it changes, changes to it are generally short term. So you can permanently ruin your trade reputation pretty easily, but the trade rep is actually separate from AI opinion. The only way you can really permanently tank their opinion of you is to raise a ton of their cities. Otherwise, if you make a lot of 20 turn deals with them, they'll, they'll like you enough to vote for you. And if one of those deals is a military alliance against the other candidate, they are guaranteed to vote for you. So the exploit is you sign a bunch of military alliances, like I did in this game, against your rival candidate the turn before you build the UN. If it's not you who builds the UN, don't worry, they will usually hold elections at some point, even in situations where it is guaranteed to cost them the game. You can also uh, do all kinds of crazy plays, like if you wouldn't even be a candidate for the UN, you can capture the UN the turn before the elections are held and win a diplomatic victory that way. So yeah, it's the fastest way to close out the game. Even if you could easily do domination or space race, it's consistent, you don't have to commit to it early in the game, it's fun as hell, and allows you for some ridiculous outplays where you win games that would otherwise be completely unwinnable. So yeah, without a doubt, Diplomatic Victory is top of the list. 10 out of 10. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let's watch this play out. Ah, oh, that's beautiful. Oh, okay. Sid difficulty too. Yeah, this one was a good game. Okay, I hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you guys next time.